Hi, this is Alfauzia Nihar from At Home Tuition. Welcome to our session today. The topic that we are going to discuss in our today's video is rectilinear motion. Maths around us at all the times during our everyday lives, and the proof is in the numerous examples of rectilinear motion in our daily life. If you are scratching your head in mathematics class, or if you are wondering when all the stuff you learn will ever ever be useful. Now it's time to stop worrying. Here we are going to discuss the ins and outs of the rectilinear motion and some examples of rectilinear motion in daily life, which make it easier to understand this concept of rectilinear motion and its applicability to us. First, let us see what is the rectilinear motion. Actually, this topic does not play a very important role in our syllabus, but we should be familiar with this topic too. Any motion in which objects or particles takes a straight path is considered the rectilinear motion. It is also often referred to as straight motion or rectilinear kinematics. Whether it is simply a girl walking straight down a path or any vehicle or automobile driving along a straight road, particles in the air moving in a straight parallel line, or even the marching of the military personnel in a straight line. So each of these behaviors is considered to be rectilinear motion. There are many real-world applications and examples that pertain to rectilinear motion. To fully understand the basic concept of rectilinear motion, a few related mathematical terminologies must be also be reviewed. For example, distance, displacement. Okay. So distance and displacement are the terms relevant to grasping the concept of rectilinear motion. Distance refers to the total length. Covered during a journey or a motion, am I right? And displacement means the length between the starting position and the ending position. Relatedly, speed and velocity are also important factors to consider when understanding motion. These are the terms which also used in physics. Relatedly, speed and velocity are also important factors. Speed refers to the rate at which the distance changes, and velocity refers to the rate at which the displacement changes. While each of these factor is at play in some form or the another, during the rectilinear motion, it is very very important to remember that rectilinear motion only pertains to the movement of objects along a straight or a parallel line. I have posted a diagram. This diagram illustrates the path of a rectilinear motion on the x-axis, though it can take place along any axis as long as it is a linear motion. Accounting for the variables such as time, distance, displacement, velocity, and acceleration. So each of the variables are influenced during the rectilinear kinematics. Please have a glance over this graph, and I will also explain you the terms, the variables used here. T naught is nothing but on the time interval delta t. T naught is to the original time. The original time t naught plus the change delta t. Is equal to the final time t. The final time is always denoted by the t, and this is denoted by original time, which tends to change. And x naught, it is the position defined by x naught at the t naught, and x of t is nothing but the final position at time t. Delta x, as I already told, that is the change. Change, I mean x minus x naught. Delta x is the displacement given by delta t. And let us uh, see other few variables too. We must know about the velocity. V naught is nothing but the original velocity during t naught, and V is the final velocity at time t. And small y is usually denoted by as usually denoting the acceleration. So in the case of rectilinear motion, acceleration is held constant, so that we can derive equations for the position of the moving particles, figuring out their position, velocity, or displacement as they undergo rectilinear motion. There are four equations which are essential components to mathematically describe rectilinear motion. Let me show you those equations too. Please have a glance over these four equations. The first equation. X2 is equal to x1 plus v1 t plus half times a t square. This equation is helpful in giving the position of the moving object. So whenever you get to some questions regarding finding the position of any moving object, it depends upon the scenario given. You can use this formula. You have to identify these variables. That's the reason I have listed out all the variables and the meaning of those variables. So you have to understand what each of the variable mean. 
after that you have to look for the given information and find the position using this equation please look at the second equation v2 v2 equal to v1 plus a times t this equation is very very helpful in finding the velocity of a moving object the first one is just for the position and this is for the velocity hope you are clear with this equation now the third one delta d which is equal to v1 times t plus half times a t square this is an equation which will be helpful in finding the displacement of the moving object position velocity displacement does this make sense to you this delta d it means displacement now the fourth equation v2 the whole square is equal to v1 square plus 2a times delta d this is the equation which will be helpful in finding the velocity of a moving object when time t cannot be factored please notice that this will be helpful in finding the velocity of a moving object when time cannot be factored so you can understand the relationship between this equation and this one this is just to find the velocity of a moving object when time can be factored and for this one you can use this equation in finding the velocity when time cannot be factored these are the very important four equation that will help you solve the problem mathematically you will be using these formulas both in physics as well as mathematics hope you are clear so far now let's see some examples of rectilinear motion in daily life now let us see some examples of rectilinear motion we can counter many examples of rectilinear motion in our daily lives okay here are the few examples that i have taken people riding an elevator or in a rectilinear motion along with the elevator within a building and the second one is any metal object uh, in free fall which is under the influence of gravitational forces is rectilinear motion hot water that falls into a tea cup from a vending machine is also in the rectilinear motion and athletes who are running the 100, 100 meter dash along the track are in rectilinear motion am i right same way the very common example is planes in the sky that move in a straight path are considered to be a rectilinear motion and the common example that we generally look in our house too a ball rolling down an inclined path is considered to be in rectilinear motion so far we saw examples from the house and now let us see uh, general common examples that we see in signs people marching at the parade are in rectilinear motion and uh, we have uh, heard about the famous story of newton's falling apple that would have been in rectilinear motion too and bowling balls within a lane are in rectilinear motion am i right and the local school bus driving down the street is in rectilinear motion because it is moving in a straight line and skateboarders going down an inclined path are in a rectilinear motion am i right so it is important to note that rectilinear motion does not need to take take place within one dimension or a single plane although we may map it along the x axis or y axis it can, ha can happen in any of the axis it is possible for motion to occur along a straight path that is multi dimensional or on more than one plane am i right let's take an example of rolling ball down an inclined path the inclined path is not a long one axis but the ball rolling down the path is considered to be rectilinear motion am i right do you all agree with me so long as it is following a straight path so it should follow a straight path then we can consider the motion as a rectilinear motion motion is one of the most common phenomenon we come across in our daily life for example a moving car a kid running on the road or flying or fly moving in air are all said to be in motion so in general terms a body is said to be in motion if it changes its position with respect to a reference point and particularly it should be done in some certain interval of time so depending upon the path taken by the particle the motion can be of different types like projectile motion rectilinear motion rotational motion but we particularly concentrated on rectilinear motion hope you are clear with this concept so when we require only one coordinate axis along with the time to describe the motion of a particle it is said to be in a linear motion so here uh, we have discussed some ex examples of linear motion and we should also know about the distance displacement also one more important thing is in case if you are getting a negative displacement 
it should be measured to the left of the origin so because we are concentrating one only on the axis you know while the mo particle is in the motion you should you may also get some negative displacements and when you are considering the speed and velocity those are the terms which are used to describe rate of change of position speed is nothing but the rate of change of distance while velocity is the rate of change of displacement so comparing distance can never be negative because uh, you cannot uh, I mean the distance, time, length, all these cannot be a negative one. Am I right? So negative speed is never negative while velocity can be both positive and negative. So you should notice that distance displacement can be negative. Speed cannot be negative. Velocity can be both positive and negative. So in mathematical terms we say that speed is nothing but distance over time. Okay. Hope you are clear with all the concepts that we discussed in today's video. In case, if you get any query regarding the rectilinear motion, you can let me know. See you in the next video. Have a great time ahead. Thanks for watching.